Just making sure that, you know, my name isn't bad out in the streets. No. Your name is solid in the streets. If I could be real, somebody say be real. Be real. If I could okay. be transparent, somebody say transparent. Trans- right. So, if I could One be more. honest, if I could be vulnerable, say honest and vulnerable. Honest and vulnerable. Let's do it. Everybody wants to feel these five things. If you have a relationship and any of these five things are fractured or you have any type of break in these five things, your relationship is fractured or your relationship is broken. How transparent can I be? As transparent as you want to be. I used to sleep on the benches in the basement dorms because financial aid wasn't looking for me. Financial aid didn't work for me. She's not responding for days. Ten days go by. I'm like, this is wild. I Googled her. She was arrested two days before. I Googled her. For what? Let me just break down money real quick. Please. Show you how to turn your annual income to monthly income real fast. Let's do it. Right? I know my audience. And I know somebody is saying, yeah, I mean, but you're talking about selling a $5,000 program. I don't have $5,000 worth of information, nor nor do I know people who have $5,000. I want to snap it up and clap it up for you because you are amazing. I need y'all to snap louder on that. Yep, let's hear a thunderous applause from the background. (laughs) Hey, mic check, one, two, one, two. Is Donnie Wiggins in the stool? What it do, what it do? I'm sitting here with a guest and his name is Sean. He about to put us on. Yeah, he about to put us on. Oh, I love it. (laughs) So look, 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 look. Rose from the concrete in the city. I took my ugly days in pain and made it pretty in the nitty gritty. Thorough was burrows. I had to get it, had to get it litty. (laughs) Hustled to double it. Now the money's talking to me. I got blood of a king in my veins. Okay. It took some money, took some things, took some pain. Hey. Had to take my power, turn the pain, make it rain. Oh. Take the blueprint I laid and change the game. Ah, <laughs> the crowd goes crazy. Go. <laughs> more, more, more fire, more fire. I love it. I love it. Thank you so much for uh, being a good sport. And on this new thing that we're doing, freestyling with our guests, we are having so much fun with it. And you seem like you have some bars. Sometimes. Sometimes yeah. some bars. All right. All right. We'll talk about it. Welcome to another episode of Full Transparency with Donnie Wiggins, where I give you a bird's eye view or a fly on the walls perspective of all things entrepreneurs. Uh, Today, we have a really amazing guest. At least I think he's amazing. I'm going to be honest because we're meeting for the first time today. So this is going to be really transparent because I will be getting to know Sean right along with you guys. I want to welcome to Full Transparency on the couch next to me, Sean Crume. Yes, yes. Yes, 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 yes. Hi, Sean. Hello. How are you doing today? I am amazing. How are you doing today? I'm doing great. First of all, can I just say this? Full yes. Transparency. Okay. I love how you came in with the energy. Thank and you, you made sure you were speaking to everybody. Um, hey, how are you doing today? How are we feeling? That's love, and I appreciate you for the love. Thank you. Did you expect something different? I didn't have any expectations. Okay. Just making sure that, you know, my name isn't bad out in the streets. Nah, no. Your name is solid <laughs> in the streets. They kept asking me, yo, go get Donnie Wiggins. Go get that. Like, all right, all right. Go see Donnie Wiggins, bro. Like, then I see you pop up uh, two days ago. I'm like, all right, so this this thing is moving fast. Yes. This world of manifestation is moving. Yes, I'm so excited um, to have you here. You were actually referred to me by someone whose referral sources I trust so much. And we're having a conversation. You're actually engaged in business in one of my most favorite areas of business, which is sales um, and personal development. Uh, two things that um, significantly changed my life and I can't wait to get into it and talk about it. Tell me what you do. Yes. I help people take their mindsets, turn it into tools that's to create cash flow and assets. I sell them on themselves. Mm-hmm. I teach them how to scale the business up, but just personally first, right? In order to like do anything, you have to become better. If you okay. want to have more money, you got to become better. Mm-hmm. If you want to have better experiences, you got to become better. Mm-hmm. So right now I'm teaching people how to turn their annual income into monthly income how to turn their annual income into monthly income. And this is obviously entrepreneurs who are doing this. Career professionals, entrepreneurs, speakers, tech wizards, people who have something to offer. Hmm. That's interesting because as I think of career professionals, I'm not thinking about um, first separate than an entrepreneur who's also technically a career professional, but I'm thinking about somebody in corporate that they don't get to choose what their salary is. So it's like, if you make this $5,000 a month, you make this $5,000 a month. How are you teaching them how to turn that into, um, or let's say if they're doing 60,000 a year, how are we teaching them how to do that 60,000 a month? That's perfect. Like if you already have a salary, which means you already are capped, Let's open up the cap a little bit. Let's start to give you the life you truly want, but let's put you in a position to see the roadmap. 
So if you know you're making sixty thousand a year, okay, let's reverse engineer. Let's see how we can make sixty thousand a month. Mm -hmm. And you could do it nowadays digitally, mm -hmm. less time. So the whole premise is to become more effective in less time. Mm. Become more effective in less time. So literally, if this is a corporate professional, you're helping them to establish, I guess, some type of authority outside of their job right. to leverage for income. Right. And you could utilize your job already. Mm. Everybody has a position of power already. Mm -hmm. So like, what's the, what's the number one thing that everybody has that people would pay for? I don't know. What is it? Story. Your story. Okay. Because we all have a story, mm -hmm. but I know our story is unique, but we've also all gone through some type of trauma, through some type of pain. Yeah. And when you're able to turn your pain into power, you can walk into your purpose with that. And your purpose could be helping other people get through it. Yeah. So um, if you have a story, you can most, most likely monetize your story. What's your story? Like, yeah, how far you want to go back? Because ah, our story goes deep, man. I want to hear. I want to hear the parts that are responsible for making you the mindset mogul that you are today. 100%. If I could be real, somebody say be real. Be real. If I could okay. be transparent, somebody say transparent. Trans right. So say give, you got to give me three. You got to do if I can be. <laughs> if I one could more. be honest, if I could be vulnerable, say honest and vulnerable. Honest and vulnerable. Let's do it. <laughs> All right. No, thank you for that. Thank you for holding the space. I appreciate you. For that. <laughs> yes. So growing up, I grew up in New York City. Okay. Um, I lived off and on in North Carolina as well as a youth, um, especially like summers or vacations. I'll go visit family in North Carolina, and. Um, Play basketball, went to school in North Carolina, also New York. So just going back and forth with that. But I lost both of my parents growing up. I went to seven different schools in nine years. Mm. I had gastroesophageal reflux disease where um, it was cancerous. I lost over 55 pounds in 41 days. And all of these obstacles were actually opportunities. So let's just break it down. I lost my dad when I was two. I was blessed to be able to have a second dad. My mom remarried. She had twins, and I had brothers. So I have a bunch of siblings that are amazing. And during my time growing up, going to these different schools, I'm starting to realize something. The thing that I realized was everything is temporary. Mm. So I would meet friends, and I would lose friends. Okay, okay, so now time goes by. I'm starting to lose my mom now. So this is one of my best friends. Your mom? Yeah. How old are you at this time? I'm about 15. Okay. You know, I'm jumping into, like, literally she was sick for like a year and a half type. She passed away, unfortunately, with breast cancer. She had 13 brain tumors, a collapsed lung. I seen this this amazing queen just turn into a person that could barely stand on her own. Man. And uh, she walked out of the house one day in February, like a few months before she passed. And um, I remember seeing her walk out the house she was with my grandfather, and she's going down. She's struggling, literally can't stand up. And I remember she can't stand up right now, but she used to be the person that stood up for hundreds of people. She was an entrepreneur. She used to get her own custom clothes. She had two, three businesses. She had two clubs. So she was really shaking and moving. But one thing that she didn't do was prioritize her health. Mm. So during these times, I'm learning from the mistakes of others while I'm going, and then once I lost my mom, basically I didn't have any parents. I had my stepdad now, uh, but I wasn't with him. We were separated, right? My brothers were separated from me as well. So on the weekends, we would get together, and my brothers were like my coaches. Every time they came around, I became the best version of myself. Mm. When they're not around, still was like, all right, they, they're going to come around. I got to make sure I got something for them when they come. Yeah. We all huddle up, and, we, and then to be honest, all transparency, we would cry every Sunday. Cry? Cry every Sunday. So why? Because the, the weekend was so beautiful and it was just a dream that we were all together. But mm. Sunday meant that it was time to depart. Yeah. Just like some of us feel the corporate world, we cry on Sunday because Sunday means <laughs> Monday we got to go to work. We got to go back to work. <laughs> so it was the same thing. It was like we got to go back to school. And we never really had time to grieve for losing our, our family. Um, and then unfortunately, you know, uh, we weren't able to live together. So we just was always visiting each other. But during this time, I was always soaking game from anybody. So I was one of those kids who said, people would say, oh, you got a wise soul. Yeah. Or you're very mature for your age. But where are you living if you're unable to live with your stepdad? Where are you living? With my grandma, who became like my mom. Is this your mom's mom? This is my mom's mom. Okay. And she was an amazing person, right? And she did everything that she could do. But there was something I could, couldn't help but feel. She could get, only give me enough love and attention 
as much as she could because she had her own children. Mm. Th- there's something about a mother's love that you can feel, but her love for me was so strong and so bold. That's all I needed. Mm-hmm. All I needed was a little bit of that love. Mm-hmm. She sprinkled that on me. <laughs> right? So th- who I am today is because I listened to her advice. Be a better person. Right? Be, just be better. Every day yeah. be better. And um, so all of these trials and tribulations that happen, I just use them as opportunities. Instead of looking at obstacles as something that's defeated me, I looked at it as something that was going to push me, something that's going to pull me up. And um, I started to do um, self-development, took took, um, mentorships, Mm -hmm. took seminars. How old are you then? You lose your mom at 15. 15. And you go through this journey where you're just kind of bouncing around until you end up with your grandmother. And uh, you're in school. In school, you graduate high school. Yes, I graduate high school. Salutatorian when I when I um okay salutatorian snap it up clap it up for me. Hey, I snap soft. I don't know if they can hear it, but hey, (laughs) they know the vibes. They feel the energy. (laughs) So, um, literally in ninth grade, I had a sixty five grade point average. Sixty five grade point average. If you have a sixty four, you failed. Mm -hmm. So I'm literally just passing by one point. But this is the time my mom was going through this whole turmoil. She told me she said, "Never let my sickness become your weakness." So during these times, I'm like, let me be strong. Because you know about this. Mm-hmm. They got these people that like, you want to be a strong person in, yes. in life. So you think being strong is not sharing what you're going through. Mm-hmm. You think being strong is not sharing your story. You think sharing your story is a weakness, but I soon realized my story is my strength. It's your power. Right. It is your power. Mm-hmm. No, and, and that's the real thing. Like, And I'm, I'm so excited that you are sharing, not excited about what you've had right. to endure, but sharing this releasing this like there's somebody who's watching this right now and you're setting them free because they go through these experiences or we will go through these experiences that are meant to absolutely destroy you like 15 years old and you've lost both parents and there's something different about watching somebody decline over time like you literally had to grow up really fast at a very pivotal moment of your own life yeah so you're you're in high school you graduate salutatorian did you go to college Look, let's just blank all the stuff out. Can we pause it? Because I keep telling people, don't ask me about college. Because these people that be in my emails asking me for money. And I don't know why they asking me for money. What? They talk about some type of tuition I, I need to pay them or something. I like, don't know. Yeah, I used to get those emails. Um, I, mm, let's not talk about those. That's what I'm trying to say. Like, I don't know what. Listen. I didn't go to college, okay? <laughs> I, I wasn't there. I don't even know who this person is. I but don't know I did. Who's... I was on a campus, though. Mm-hmm. And when I was on a campus... Which campus were you on? I can't tell you that. You can't tell me because where I... you hung out at? All right. So I'll tell you that. Okay. So I used to go to this campus in South Orange, New Jersey. It was okay. like Seton Hall. Which one, of my, one of my best friends used to go to this school. <laughs> I used okay. to go to this school, go hang out, want to play basketball with him. I'm sure you had fun. Um, I had fun, yeah. Mm-hmm. And I used to sleep on the benches in the basement dorms. Because financial aid wasn't looking for me. Financial aid didn't work for me. So I had to make a choice. Either I'm going to, like, grow through this or I'm going to, like, crumble through it. Mm -hmm. And it was simple. Make it work. When you went to college, what did you want to be at that time? What were you studying? Communication. Oh. I was doing graphics. Mm -hmm. I was doing videography, photography. Mm Mm-hmm. Creating websites, mm-hmm. um, just putting putting things together like that. I'm, I was a great editor, so I was like, I can always edit something. So editing became a passion of mine. Um, and I just started working on the side, making money like that. Mm-hmm. Like, hey, I'm use my. I, I I learned this a week ago, but hey, I can charge for it because <laughs> I know it. Yeah. I'm just two steps ahead of the other person. I'm realizing, okay, I'm showing you something. What do you want me to pay? You want me? To, you want to pay for it? Like, yeah. So I start shooting videos for people. Start editing it. People love it. It's amazing. It's going great. And I realize it's the light at the end of the tunnel here. Mm-hmm. Like every once again, I, I found that everything is temporary. Did you um, watch your friend graduate? One hundred percent. Watch my friend graduate <laughs> with, with, with amazing <laughs> honors because this person just said it's so amazing. Yeah. Um, you know, I wish it was me. <laughs> so you get out of college yeah. and you've got this communications degree. You're creating websites, doing graphics. And what's next for you? So honestly, I was still searching for basketball opportunities. Did you think you would go pro? You were trying to go pro? I was pro? already a pro. I don't, I don't know. I was an amateur in, in understanding people. Okay. I was a pro at what I did. Pro at the, the um, videos, photography. I got paid for that. Pro at Basketball, I got paid for that. I got a, a whole apartment from playing basketball, paid mm-hmm. for. Right, I got food, paid for. I got clothes, paid for, just off of basketball. And okay. I wasn't even one of the top recruits. 
Okay. So to me, being a pro was understanding that you can get paid for being you. Mm. All right. So I was already. I don't want anybody to miss that. Being a pro, I mean, you said two things so far that probably went over y'all's head. First things first was um, you were saying that you learned a skill and then you went out and sold it because all you had to be was two steps ahead of the person who was paying you. Some of y'all are thinking right now, like, I don't want you to miss the gems that are in the story, which is why stories are powerful and profitable. But I don't want you to miss the gems that are in the story you think you have to be so far along. Like I have to know everything from A to Z when really all you have to know is D to a person whose experience only goes to B. Two steps ahead, one step ahead, and you can sell that information. 100%. Why not? Yeah, for sure. And you just just went into a whole other direction. I don't want to cut you off because it was a very powerful um, lane that you were going into for sure. So – and I, I thank you for like stopping that and allowing people to get that information mm-hmm. because it shouldn't be going over your head. But if it does, hey, look, we brought it back so that way you can get the game, pick it up, and be able yeah, to do something with yeah. it. So, the, one of the things was um, just me me understanding that okay, cool, I can go and get paid for these things. Um, I did, you know, trust a person to basically get my room and board overseas. Like when you when you go out to try out for basketball teams, you got to pay for everything. Um, I saved up some money because I was doing all the other stuff. I saved up some money and I just gave it all away. Cause I, what do you mean? As a student, you know, or as a kid who's like 22, 21, I, I gave away basically my life savings for my dream to a person because I thought it was going towards my dream. Mm-hmm. And she was a person who her mom was a diplomat and um, I thought she was a trustworthy person. So she already was in the area that I wanted to do the basketball, get paid to play basketball. Was she acting like as an agent to she you? She was acting as a person who was going to get the room and board and stuff for me. Okay. Because she was already there. Okay. So if you're already there, you you know hold it down. Like, all right, I'm going to pay you the money. Just set me up. So that way, as soon as I get there, I'm not looking. I'm not wondering. I'm, I'm there. Mm-hmm. And it was a ploy the entire time, like, you know, to extrapolate money. And um, I was looking for her, like, hey, what's up? Where you at? Like, I haven't, if, if you don't have the place ready, just send the money back. I'll go get it myself. Mm-hmm. Because time is ticking on these trials. She's not responding for days. Ten days go by. I'm like, this is wild. I Googled her. She was arrested two days before. the. I Googled. For what? Something related to what she had done to you? (laughs) Right. Identity theft. Right. Stealing people's information. Taking people's money. Not being true to her word. And that thing, I thought, set me back. Hmm. But every setback is actually a setup. So it was a setup for entrepreneurship. So you weren't able because she took this money. Now she's gone. You weren't able to go overseas. My my whole life up until that, I just listened to everybody. So my mom passed away. I wanted to go play basketball. I had a scholarship in South Carolina. But I was 2D. I wanted to go. I wanted to go to D1 school. So I was like, Mm -hmm. let me go over here. Um, And I wanted to go to Hawaii. My grandmother was like, that's too far. My mom made a promise to I made a promise to your mom that I will protect you and make sure that you are close by so that way you get the best that you need. If you're six, eight hours away, I can't just jump on a plane and come get you yeah. or anything like that. I'm a kid. All right, listen to grandma, whatever. I'm going to make the best. I know I'm great. I'm going to yeah. make the best wherever I go. So I go there and I can't even play on the basketball team because when I get there, before I got there, I spoke to the coach. Hey, look, I want to come make sure I try out. Come on, come try out. I get there the same year. This guy gets fired. So now there's a brand new coach. We don't have the relationship lost. So now I go to the tryouts. They're like, look, I like you. You're great. You're a great guy. You're very talented. But I'm going to be real with you. Full transparency, mm-hmm. this college sport is a business, my boy. I, I have relationships with these kids since they were 10. Mm-hmm. These guys are 20, 18, 19. Yeah. I don't have a relationship with you. I just met you. Hey, hey, are you a service-based entrepreneur that helps your clients or customers get some type of result, but you're struggling to post and communicate your message on social media? You don't know how to type a caption that connects and gets people's attention and converts them from just someone who's following you on social to becoming your customer or your client. Great news is 
That's my superpower. So I'm sending you three text messages every single day, excluding major holidays, directly to your phone of exactly what you need to post to get people to buy and convert them into clients and customers. All you have to do is join my program, Post to Paid, and you can do so by texting the words Post to Paid to 404-737-2767. And the best news is just $37 a month. So hurry up, send me the text. I'm looking for it now. I can't play you regardless if I wanted to because due to our rules and structure, this is what we do. That's what so we unfortunately, do. you could play on the practice team. Damn. Practice player. Yeah, practice team. Overseas. Right. It's risky. So I'm like, whoa. All right. <laughs> cool. I don't get to go overseas. Whatever that money got taken. All right. Switch gears. Entrepreneur. I'm going to sell what I was selling. How long ago is this? This is 2013. 2013. Um, do you still have your grandmother today? No, unfortunately, last year she passed away. Man. Yeah. You've just experienced so much loss. Um, I want to get to how that affects you in your relationships and how you do business and just go through life. Right. Um, do you feel like... Usually, well, not even usually, but oftentimes people will say that they experience like attachment issues, getting close to people um, because they have experienced so much loss. You're smiling just a little bit. Would you say that that's something that you've struggled with? Attachment, yes, but maybe not in the way that you may think or the normal way that is pr proposed, right? Mm -hmm. For me, it makes me love harder. Mm. It makes me become such a great lover because I'm always in the moment understanding that this is the time that we have. Mm -hmm. You are the most amazing person in my world right here, right now. It don't matter like where we at. You are the most amazing person in my life right now. You're in my life right now. For sure. I mean, I'm, I'm definitely going to agree with that. Right. And you know, what's interesting about that is most people think I'm the most amazing person in their lives at that time. I also think that you're the most amazing person at this time in my life. So here we go. See, but that's what you start to realize that I'm not the only one you're who believes the these things. So you start to understand you're more connected to a tribe than you really think you are. Mm. And when you feel connected to something, you feel more empowered to be somebody. When you feel connected to something, you feel more empowered to be somebody. Right. Mm. And losing my family. I think I lost a family member or multiple family members for 20 years straight, by the way. Every single year, I lost somebody. And um, the reality of the matter is... Me looking at the losses made me look at the gains. Because everything has duality. Like, you can't really appreciate the great without having the terrible. Without having the bad, can't appreciate the good. Mm, like, I struggle with that, you know. Why, why so? Well, when it comes to, I, I don't see the light at the end of the tunnel when it comes to death. Like, you experience this tremendous, terrible pain, like, the closest person to pass away uh, for me still happened about 20 years ago, right? Well, it hasn't been 20 years ago, maybe about 15 years ago. And she was like my grandmother. I see no light at the end of that tunnel. Every year for her birthday, I still miss her so much. Every year during the holidays, somebody makes the gumbo, which is what she was like the queen of making. And it's like, man, but it's still like not my Auntie Betty. I see no light at the end of the tunnel. I can see that um, I guess maybe it's like, well, she passed down the skill to cook to her kids. And we still, you know, she's but I would rather have her here. And I, I admire that you were able to see like a positive in the midst of all of this trauma, there's some things like a relationship that may have gone bad, ended traumatically. I can find light there. Maybe I grew as a person. Um, maybe I discovered more about what my type is and what I want out of a relationship, like through that experience. But like complete and final loss, I struggle with seeing the light at the end of the tunnel. And I want to send you a lot of love. Okay. And healing and just beautiful energy because thank you. It, it's not easy to be vulnerable and transparent, but here you are. Mm -hmm. So I thank you for that. And I thank you for allowing me into your world a little bit to express that because this is how we're going to be able to connect with each other. And how transparent can I be with you? As transparent as you want to be. Okay. So the thing for me, right, it's about memories. 
I seen you on Saturday. Mm-hmm. Is Saturday here? No. Is what? It's Monday. And it's a memory. It's a memory. Mm-hmm. Life is made up of these memories. Mm-hmm. Life is made up of beautiful experiences. This is all temporary. It would have, it would have been temporary regardless whether you want to acknowledge it or not. It's all temporary. Yeah. And the best part about it is the memories. Mm-hmm. What's her name? Betty, Aunt okay. Betty. So Aunt Betty, shout out to Aunt Betty. If you got yeah. an Aunt Betty out there, that's amazing. That made you feel these five made you feel loved, appreciated, heard, felt, and seen. Then just go send Aunt Betty a text or Grandma Betty a text and just tell her how much you love her. So one of those things, right, is you can still call on Aunt Betty. Mm. As entrepreneurs, and you probably use this, and I'm quite sure you do use this because any successful entrepreneur most likely uses this. Mm -hmm. This tool is called creative visualization, where you see it before it happens. You saw this before it happened. You knew what you wanted. You said, I'm doing this, I'm doing that, even with your outfit. You already knew. Before it became on your body, you said, I'm putting this on. Yeah. Visualizing it. Mm -hmm. Now, with with Betty, you could do the same thing. Mm -hmm. Because what would Betty say right now? If you needed a hug right now, what would Betty do? She would give me a hug. Right. She said, come here, baby. <laughs> and come here, Danitra. That's my full name, right. Danitra, but my family's from New Orleans, so it's always Danitra. Come here, Danitra. <laughs> right, right. And I like that. I never heard Danitra before. Yeah. Um, until I was reading through paperwork. It's like, okay. <laughs> So we got paperwork on full transparency just to be totally transparent now. <laughs> so, so I'm looking at it um, from a perspective of you got to be with one of the greatest ancestors mm. in your life. I got to be with one of the greatest ancestors in my life. Think about it. Yeah. If Aunt Betty is so amazing, mm-hmm. and let's say a person didn't have Aunt Betty, what could Aunt Betty do if that person did have Aunt Betty? Like what, could that, what, mm-hmm. what could Aunt Betty do for that person? Yeah. What did Aunt Betty do for you? So uh, she raised me right. in the beginning. My mom's mom, my grandmother, passed away just three months before I was born unexpectedly. Right. She suddenly was diagnosed with lung cancer. Uh, my mom at the time was in Germany where I was conceived and had to come back from the military uh, to assist my, my, my grandmother um, through this, surg- this surgical procedure. And they thought that they would be able to perform a surgery and she'd be fine. And she actually was fine right after the surgery. And um, the story gets a little fuzzy, but from what I remember, um, my mom went home to go and get her some clothes. And she got a call from the hospital that said, you need to come back immediately. And my grandmother passed. Mm -hmm. So that said, my mother went through uh, a period of significant depression, right? And um, she wanted to move out of New Orleans. She wanted to come to Atlanta. There are better opportunities, new energy, new environment. And so I came here to Atlanta with my mom. But because my birthday is in December, um, I was unable to start school and stuff like at the right age. And she didn't want me to go through having a, a being late graduating. Right. She'd rather me be early. So I went back to New Orleans to live with my Aunt Betty, who is my grandmother's sister. So she was like my grandma. And um, I went there to live with her for several years. And I started elementary school and everything in New Orleans. And my Aunt Betty was just such a nurturing woman. She took care of me. She made sure I was like her first grandchild. And if she were here today, she would say I was her first grandbaby. That's one of her grandkids right there, like for real. Um, But she would say I was first, (laughs) Bree. Right. She would say I was first. And um, we used to have this thing with when I became a teenager, I would start wearing, you know, the fake nails. And we she'd always ask me, like, let me see what those nails look like. You know, that was our thing. I would always talk about her nails. She'd talk about mine. And growing up, I can remember her sitting on her sofa and I sit on the floor right at her feet. And that's how I got into soap operas because who wasn't watching soap operas, you know, um, in the eighties, if you, if you were around in that time, who wasn't watching soap operas with their grandparent and we would watch, um, Victor Newman on young and the restless. And, uh, she's an amazing cook. And I always aspired to be an amazing cook because 
she was an amazing cook and my mom is an amazing cook. And I'm like, this has to be a family thing. You know, I can't be the first non amazing cook. And, um, and I am, a, I am an amazing cook. So I believe like there's this thing, you know, where she, she also spoke very well. She was a teacher. Um, she worked in the school, you know, in the school system, she spoke very well. And I come from a family like my grandmother, from what I understand, also spoke very well, communicated very well. And my mom has been telling me literally since I was three years old that communication is my gift. And that I got it innately from my grandmother, but I think it was fine tuned through my Aunt Betty. And um, there's just so many, like I can literally still smell her perfume. If I walk past somebody in the street, it's startling. Like I can right now smell her perfume. I have amazing memories. Um, and if you came, uh, she had seven children. I don't know how many grandchildren at this point. But we all shared at one time, we all shared this very small home um, on this place called America Street in New Orleans. And it it was a small home. And like some of us, the kids, the grandkids were like sleeping, you know, in the living room on the floor and stuff. But it never seemed to matter how small that house was or how many people was in it already. If you needed shelter, if you needed food, if you needed love and support, that was my Aunt Betty. It would be, you know, it, whether it was five of us in the house or 20 of us in the house, she was going to take care of you for sure. Mm. For sure. She I, died of cancer, too. Sending you love on that one as well. And so she's still guiding you today. For sure. Yeah. That, that That's the role of the ancestor. You know what's crazy is um, I have this thing. I hate getting my nails done. Yeah but I like the way my nails look done. And um, I am, you're like, if you're really on top of getting your nails done, like some women consider this self-care, I'm a germaphobe. I hate going to the nail salon. It's the filthiest place. I don't care how clean it is. It's like, come on, it's people's feet and hands. It's nasty. So I have a terrible habit of going to the nail salon maybe once a month unless I have something to do. And so you'll have this new growth, right? And I remember my aunt laying in the hospital bed and she had gone into the hospital. It was around holiday time. And she grabbed my hand and she looked at my nails and they had just been done. And she said, okay, I see you. I see you. I see your nails. And I looked at hers and they had grown out. And they had grown out so much. She's like, oh, I got to get these nails done. Don't look at my nails. Like, they look terrible. They're this. And so I'm, I'm always hiding my hands when this new growth, you know, comes out. But whenever I look at my nails and I see all this new growth, I remember holding her hand in that moment. Like, let me get my butt up and go to the salon. Because like that, she always made sure my nails were done. Like, if you're going to wear these nails, you keep these nails done. Yeah. <laughs> so you see how she's guiding you? So the light at the end of the tunnel may be different for you, may be different for you. But the light at the end of the tunnel is everything is temporary. Yeah. But everything serves a purpose. Mm -hmm. Everything you do matters. Mm -hmm. Every experience you have matters. And all you ever have anyway are memories. That's it. So even if she was hit, sitting here right here right now, after, after this moment, it's just a memory. After she speaks to you, it's just a memory. Yeah. After the second goes by, it's just a memory. Mm -hmm. It's all memories. Yeah. That it's all about experiences. So as long as she, she gave you the most beautiful experiences mm -hmm. that can guide you while you're here, she's never really gone. Mm. You can look back to those memories just like you just did. And I got to, I don't know how she looks totally, but she, she, I didn't have to know how she looked because I knew how she felt. Yeah. And she reminded me of my grandma. Mm. So that's why, I, like, when I think about it, when you say everything matters, but when we also say everything is temporary, you realize you can love a lot harder. Because how many times have we taken those moments with those beautiful people for granted? My grandmother used to yell, hey, put your jacket on, because I'm outside playing with no jacket. <laughs> Why I got to put my jacket on? She'd, go, she'd, come, she'd see me put my jacket on, take it off real quick, and I'm outside again. Mm -hmm. And like you said, that, that house, I came from one of those houses, too, where I slept on a couch for like six years or so. Mm -hmm. I didn't have my own room. I was just hanging on my grandma. I didn't, my, I didn't have a closet, none of that. Um, and there was all sorts of people where there were people who I met them as strangers, 
and now they're family, mm-hmm. right? Because it's not about family, just a word. Family is just a title that we put on people who came from the same portal as us, same portal of life. But family is also how they make you feel. Yeah. So you can create your family, which we all do. We all grow and create our own families. But that's that's the thing. You got to create your reality just like you create the family. Mm-hmm. And this is about beautiful experiences. So wouldn't you want to be that person that Aunt Betty was to somebody else? For sure. That's what your show does. Mm -hmm. Your show makes a person feel loved because everybody wants to feel these five things. Now, if you have a relationship and any of these five things are fractured or you have any type of break in these five things, your relationship is fractured, your relationship is broken. Everybody wants to feel loved, appreciated, heard, felt, and seen. And that is the key. That's the secret sauce to the to, to Aunt Betty, to to my grandma. That's that's mm-hmm. she made you feel that way. <clears throat> yeah. Even when it was about the nails. Even when it's about the nails. All right. It's crazy that that just all came rushing back. I can literally see that moment and hear it so clearly when you think about the memories. And it makes me smile. <laughs> it feels good, right? It does. It feels good for sure. So say can we say thank you to Aunt Betty? Thank you, Aunt Betty, for sure. Thank you. And I, th- I called her um, Aunt Betty, but she was affectionately known as Fat Mama. <laughs> oh, Fat Mama. Then she definitely was. Let me get some of that word. <laughs> yeah, she definitely was one of the pillars. For sure. For sure. And, you know, um, I'm going to be like her. I know that I will ultimately end up being, when it's my turn to be the matriarch of the family, I cannot wait. Like, so many people are afraid of aging, getting older. I cannot wait until I am in my 60s and 70s and I become the matriarch of the family. And and I'm big mama. Now, it's not going to be because I'm big, you know, in stature. But I'm big mama. I'm, this is my daughter. This is my bonus baby. She's really my cousin. Um, They both work with me. And one day, y'all are going to have kids. And I'm they're going to be bringing them to my house. I'll be making the gumbo and the mac and cheese and all of that stuff. And I'm Big Mama. Right. Big Donnie. Not the little one. <laughs> Big Donnie. Shout out to the bonus babies. Yes, yes, Where yes. Where are my yes. bonus babies at? Shout out to my <laughs> bonus babies. <laughs> That's right, Brie. <laughs> yeah, and she's the bonus baby because... um. Her, her parents had her later in life, and I was in high school. Um, her parents are my godparents. And so I was in high school, and they work, like, a lot. And so I um, baby, I was, like, the, the stand-in babysitter. So I got to spend a lot of time with her five years prior to my own daughter coming along. Wow. Um, hmm. That math isn't mathing. How old are you? 26? It wasn't high school. It was college. Yeah, I was about to say, hold on. <laughs> so let me get it right. <laughs> that math isn't mathing, but yeah, so I got to spend a lot of time with Bree. Um, when I actually came back, I drop I'm a college dropout. Mm-hmm. And um she helped me practice what taking care of a child is. It's so interesting. So you go through all of this loss, right. which you have turned into gain lessons. Right amazing memories what do you do with all of this you learn from it like most people let me ask you a question what's the purpose of the past to teach you yeah and to guide your future right what's the purpose of the future what's the purpose of the future um for me or for others for you um the purpose of my future is to grow Mm -hmm. um it's definitely to eventually become the past but definitely to grow and to become a better version of who I am. I love that. And what's the purpose of the present? The purpose of the present. Uh, gosh, you're making me go deep. Yes. But if I'm thinking about it, the purpose of the present is to demonstrate growth from my past. Okay. I love it. See, because we all have different perspectives, but you can't help but to have different perspectives. Everybody has their own perspective. Mm-hmm. For me, the way I'm seeing it as a philosopher is the past is meant to have you learned from the past? Mm-hmm. So you learn from the past, but what is learning? What's the purpose of learning? The purpose of learning is mastery. So most people see the past and then they bring the past into the future and have a predictable future. That's why they keep having the same type of present, right? Present with the same situations. And I wanted to break this down because I started to realize something. 
when I said everything was temporary. So the past, you learn from the past, you see the future, and you live in the present. You live in the present. The present is the possibilities. You live in the possibilities of the present, mm -hmm. right? So understanding that you live in the possibilities of the present, you now could actually go out there and create the life you truly want. Mm -hmm. Why? Because you understand you live in the possibilities. You live in the possibilities. Right. So one of the things that I've learned from being a bonus baby, right? I was a bonus baby to one Shout of my professors. Shout out bonus baby. Look, I'm serious. I was a bonus <laughs> baby to one of my teachers. And she used to give me $50 and lunch at the end of the week. Mm hmm I think she used to make me lunch almost every day, but she used to give me $50 at the end of the week. And I used to ask her why she said, it's not about the money. I would give that to you many times over. Do you know why you're, I'm giving this to you? Because of the young man that you're turning into. Mm. This was the first example that I got that success is something you attract by the person you become. For sure. For sure. I was $50 richer. <laughs> every, every week I was $50 rich. I'm like yeah I was lit <laughs> you know and um and that was amazing so I'll take these these lessons from the past and I master them and I write down my breakthroughs anything I'm going through I write it down mm -hmm. I put it down in my notes because most of us are just going through life and just experience the same things because we're not measuring our growth measuring our success measuring our trials and tribulations mm -hmm. so I would start to measure these things and now I know, okay, cool. Let me learn to not do this. Mm -hmm. Let me learn to make sure I put myself in this position. So my past allowed me to say, okay, let me see my future. Let me see what I want in my life. And then my present allowed me to be gifted with things. Mm. So if you stand in a present moment, you get gifted with things. That's why they call it the present. Yeah. And you talked about your gift being communication. And I see that because your gift will give you your gold. If you look for your gift, you don't have to look that far. Yeah. You just got to be that person. Yeah. You have to become right. the person who recognizes the gift inside of you. So as you're speaking, um, we are so in alignment because what you're talking about, um, I call manifestation, meditation. Uh, you spoke about jotting things down immediately in your notes. I journal. So this is my daily routine. Like wake up. I immediately meditate and I'm just listening and I love guided meditation so I can, you know, start to visualize my future in the present. Right. And then I will get up and I will journal and I am often journaling about how my past has positioned me for today. I don't journal about things that I don't want. I'm journaling about highlights from my past, meaning what happened the day before and what happened the day before that and what are my intentions for today and how it's going to you know, tie into my future. Right. Yeah. What's your morning routine like? Morning routine. I got to win the day the first 30 minutes. So the first 30 minutes is deal with meditation and goal setting. Mm -hmm. You want to set goals. Why do I want to set goals? Because it's something called segment intention. So if segment, I'm, segment intention. Okay. Right. So if I, if I'm segment intending for what I want, then most likely it happens. Just that's, that's just what I've noticed. So me spend the first 30 minutes meditating and thinking about the goals, thinking about what I want to do, where I want to be today. Mm -hmm. Not about five years from now. Yeah. Talking about right here, right now, in the next few minutes, what am I going to do? Yeah. Then take a shower. When I'm in there, another meditative session, for some reason, it's just so therapeutic to be in that theta state. Right, where you're just get, getting the water on your back of your head and your body. And we just... are the same person. Yeah. Are you my brother? I am. I think so. No, like literally. Yeah. I, after journaling, I get up, I get in the shower, and that's where I pray. Right. It becomes another meditative state, but there's, like you said, there's something so therapeutic. I think it's the frequency of the water and, and the, how it aligns with your own internal frequency. It's the sound of the water. But it's also like that steam just really opening you up. And I call it having uh, giving you the ability to receive, right? Um, because your pores are opening. Yeah. 100%. And if y'all want to add some 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 love to that, right? Because you got to love yourself enough to do the things you need to do to get what you want. And you could add some eucalyptus in there. You could put the meditation music on. You could just put some lights in there. Maybe you got the magenta. Maybe you got a nice little pink or something. Just let your body just be loved in the moment with frequency. With frequency. Love this. So um, I'm usually playing like Hertz frequency music while I'm in the shower. Oh, my 
I told you. Yes. yes, yes, yes. So you talked about eucalyptus. I love my eucalyptus plant that hangs over the shower head. But I just recently discovered in Target, literally last week, I don't know if it's just for the holiday, but they have this holiday packaging shower bomb, like a bath bomb. It's a, sh- you know, the bath bombs you put in the right. tub and they sizzle. It's a disc in the shower that you drop in the shower that is, um, you drop it in your shower water and it emits all of this um, essential oils. I bought the eucalyptus and peppermint one. I used it this morning. Changed my life. You gotta go rack up now. Gotta go wrap up. I don't I'm care. Going, I'm going there. I'm going to you got, I don't care that they all, all the bags say ho, ho, ho with candy canes on them. I'm buying them all. Right. Because it was just a completely different experience. And people will think you're crazy for meditation and manifestation. My affirmations are written all over my bathroom wall. Right. So I can see them if I'm in the shower, through the glass, as I'm brushing my teeth, doing my hair. I'm saying my affirmations. I'm so intentional. I think that so much happens to us that goes against who we actually want to be. So much happens to us that can be traumatic or negative or um, it can cause you to pause that we have to be intentional, like overly intentional about reprogramming our subconscious mind, like on purpose. And I believe that it's 1000 percent the reason for the level of success that I've achieved. 100 percent. For sure. It's about and this is deep layered, right? Number one is about beautiful experiences. The more beautiful your experiences are, the better you can create. Mm-hmm. Right? When you come from out that meditative shower, don't you feel like a, a million bucks? A, a million, million bucks. A million bucks. Right. Suddenly I want to do everything. What needs to be clean? What needs to be picked up? Who needs to be responded to? Like, I'm so productive. Small sure. wins create big gains. Mm-hmm. So you have those beautiful experiences. But what else? Right? We understand that when we look at the life, it's, it's more about. How are we utilizing what's for us? Because most of the time we're against what's for us and we're for what's against us. Mm-hmm. So we allow ourselves to trick ourselves out of beautiful experience. Mm. And if we were to if we were to able to realize that maybe I should spend major time on major things versus mm-hmm. spending major time on minor things we might be able to understand why we're getting the results that we're truly getting in our lives. Mm-hmm. And one of the major times that I like to spend is on that f- the first 30 minutes, right? And you, ha- you have that first like routine where you're just getting up and then you, and then after that exercise, but it, when you're in the shower, you're making sure that you're actually. Hey, hey, CEO Donnie Wiggins here. And I am so excited to announce my new mentorship group is dropping. You may have already heard about it, but I wanted to, I wanted you to hear it from the horse's mouth directly from me. My new mentorship group, Actionable CEO, for entrepreneurs who are interested in professional growth, personal growth, and financial growth. You want to learn from me. Y'all have been asking for this for the last three years, and I have finally brought Actionable CEO back to serve you every single week, direct mentorship from me. You will also hear from other people who are in my community that I believe will be greatly impactful to you. You're going to get behind the scenes. We're going to be spending some time together live. This is not pre recorded, this is live mentorship. So if you are an entrepreneur and you want to be connected, feel connected, you want to elevate your brand, you want to elevate your life, you want to elevate your level of success. Actionable CEO is for you. ActionableCEO.com. See you there. Receiving everything. Yeah. Because you're going to get blessings. Yeah. But if you don't understand, like, the message within the mess, then you got to keep going through the test. Mm -hmm. You never really receive that blessing. Mm -hmm. Um, So for me, I've been taking the first 30 minutes to an hour to say, this right here is how I'm going to win the day. Mm -hmm. Literally, game changer. Yeah, for sure. 100%. I tell everybody I own the first two hours of my day. I need two hours. Okay. Um, And that's probably like man, woman thing. I'm a woman. I need two hours to just, I want to wake up and I don't want to rush to do anything. I just want to sit in stillness. I, I wake up early. I lay there. I'm probably looking out the window at the lights, the cars, the traffic going by the city, um, whatever that is. And then I'm in, and then I have intentional, um, meditation and people misunderstand meditation. It's simply to think, right? Like that's all you're doing is thinking and visualizing. 
And then I'm intentional about doing a guided meditation and then journaling and then my shower and my affirmations and getting dressed. Like the first two hours of the day are mine. I don't take calls from clients. I don't take calls um, that are non-emergency from anybody else. I do whatever I want. That is the one way, especially as a busy entrepreneur who's responsible. I have the weight of the world on my shoulders. I take care of a lot of stuff. And that's the one thing to make sure I do that, that, that I do to make sure that I'm taking care of me. Like it's about whatever I want. If I want to cook like some type of over the top breakfast, I get to do that in that two hour period of time. If I just want to walk around my house and dance fresh out of the shower, I get to do that. Whatever Donnie feels like she needs at that time is what I am intentional about. And I don't care who calls my phone. Unless it's an emergency and my, my my family knows how to get through, get me in an emergency. But I don't care who calls my phone. I don't care what dollar amount it is. I need these first two hours of my day to be mine. Because when I open up my sales calls, when I start responding to texts from the team, when I'm, it's fires, it's constant fires that have to be put out. Or it's constant decisions. And many of the decisions as a CEO are heavy decisions, important decisions. These, these decisions today impact what's happening in the business or what's happening for team. And if you're going to make payroll and, you know, these decisions matter. And so I just like ease. And that's why I don't journal about negative stuff. Like I'm not in that two hour period of time. I'm not allocating any time to doubt and negativity and disbelief. It's only things that are meant to build and grow me. hundred percent. And I'm quite sure that process created thousands of dollars for you hundreds of thousands of dollars for you millions of dollars millions of dollars for you for sure no seriously because before that process I was making hundreds of thousands of dollars like I had a routine um and it was a good routine you only know what you know and you begin to have these experiences like us talking now I'm like I'm learning a little bit more so I'm gonna make some tweaks right you only know what you know but when this became my routine and not only when it became my routine, but when Donnie became intentional about this routine and intentional about auditing what I'm speaking, intentional about the negativity that you can uh, that you can put on yourself. Sometimes it doesn't matter who else comes. You might not talk to anybody the whole day, but it's your mental enemy, right? It's that inner me becoming your enemy. Yeah. And when I became intentional about that and understanding it, that's when things took off. To That's, that's when I built a seven-figure business. And I believe that it's also why I hadn't had a, a problem like so many entrepreneurs duplicating seven figures year after year. Yeah. And it's, it's a process. Most people want the prize, but they want to go through the process, right? Yeah. We know this. But I just want to say something to everybody because you might be hearing this and you might be like, well, that's Donnie. Yeah, that's crew. But what about me? There's a you inside of you that you haven't even met yet. Mm. There's a you inside of you that has been waiting to be unleashed. But you have to start to look at which things in your life must die in order to give birth to you reaching your greatest potential. Yeah. To you being the highest version of yourself. And when you start asking yourself higher level questions, you get higher level results. Because life doesn't go according to plan, but it goes according to vision. So you got to have a vision. When you set your intention for the day and then you start putting out the fires, the vision changes a little bit mm -hmm. or the plan changes a lot. But the ultimate end goal still will be the same. Now, what I like to add into it is thinkitation. So you got meditation, then you got thinkitation. Everybody does thinkitation, but now you find your pockets of thinkitation. So, all right, cool. You get to the middle of the day. Now you sit for 10 minutes. You sit for five minutes and you think thinkitate. Mm -hmm. What is thinkitation? Thinkitation, you ever drive and then you drift off? And you start thinking about some random stuff, but you're driving. And then something happens on the road and it makes you wake up and like, oh, damn, I wasn't even paying attention the whole time. Yeah. But I'm That's us. Imagine if your life was, you were on autopilot this entire time. And you look around and go, damn, my life is pretty good to be on autopilot. What if I got super intentional? So people talk about relationships. Uh, relationships affect your income. People say, I want a serious relationship. And then they have a serious breakup. Why? Because it was a serious relationship. You got too serious with each other, right? Serial, right? Understand, I want intentional, an intentional relationship. 
It's like mm. you want an intentional day. Somebody say I want an intentional relationship. I want an put the M's in the chat. I want I want an intentional. Put what in the chat? Put the M's in. When you feel like, mm, put the M's in the chat. Put the M's in the chat. If you right. know that you want intentional relationships around you, and that really like you also have to be careful when you're in the thinkitation or your meditation, what you're thinking on, because you'll say things like, and I have said it. I, you know what? I'm ready for a serious relationship. I'm ready for a commitment. And you get the commitment, you get the serious relationship, but you get a serious relationship with some serious issues, right? Keep going. Some serious obstacles. Don't stop. Right. Don't. You get, I mean, you get these serious ob ob objections, right? Um, and you have to be really, really careful how you speak. I want, you have, I want an intentional relationship, but even that, like intentional on what, right? I want a relationship that is intentionally happy. Right intentionally healthy we intentionally do the work we are intentional about our future we are intentional about the vision that we have for ourselves and you have to speak that same way over your business right. you speak that same way over your friendships you speak that same way over the, your team and the people around you mm. right when you do the think of the think of tation, right it's really just you sitting down or you doing something. You could be brushing your teeth to do thinkitation. Like everybody does it. Like everybody thinkitates. That's like the easiest form that everybody does versus meditation. Meditation is a little more still. It's a little more um, intentional. Mm -hmm. So the thing with, with, with all of this also is there's no right or wrong. It's only workable and non-workable. When we start to realize what's workable, you remove what's non-workable and you keep what's workable. You expand upon it. Now, one of the fundamental principles that I like to look at is intuition. You are already guiding yourself. Sometimes we overplan, even though preparation is great, but we overplan things, yeah. right? And then any anyway, in that split moment, we make a split decision anyway. So how do we overcome some of these things? You want to start to say, okay, I know I want an intentional relationship. I know I want a life of love and beautiful things, but you have to be the person that does it to yourself first. Mm. Right. You have to actually walk in and be the reflection of the life you truly want. And then it shows up. So when it comes like with the with the um, with the intentional relationship, you got to understand a, a principle. The principle is that language creates reality. Language produces a thought. The thought produces a belief. The belief is whether you can or you can't. Either way, you're going to do an action. And then the action creates a result. That result is your life. So your your life is based upon the things you say. Mm. And. That's why when you say intentional, you're not going to intentionally hurt yourself yeah. when it comes to relationship. Right. You're going to say, I want an intentional, happy relationship, mm -hmm. right? And you're going to na name all of these things. And this is the process to create not only like wealth, but to create health, mm. right? And understanding that you are the MVP of your life. You are the most valuable participant in your world. You got to be the one that makes sure things happen. So you can't sit around. And I, I want to talk about this because most women, they settle for guys. Mm -hmm. Like most most women settle for men because they settle for the people that comes in contact with them. Right? Mm. And most men, they settle for misses right now instead of looking for misses right. Yeah. And the issue with that is because we want instant gratification. We're not going to have instant gratification unless we are the ones that are satisfying in ourselves, right? And how do you satisfy yourself? You satisfy yourself by putting the intention out there, completing the intention. It's really just that simple. It's just that simple to have an intention and complete the intention. So now when it comes to relationships, when it comes to uh, tying relationships to money and everything like that, if you, you got to have a business love language, right? So you, not only people speak about the five love languages, but then they choose three out of the five. When it's like a million, you should choose all of them. I choose all. Right. Choose, choose every I single one. I need all of them. Every single last one. With emphasis, right? With emphasis. Right. Yeah. With emphasis. So when you have that, right, you got to think about, okay, which partner do I want to be with? So when I'm out networking as an entrepreneur, is this person going to be upset? If I'm going to be working long hours, is this person going to be upset? <laughs> or is this person going to introduce me to more people? Like, you have to understand these questions and be able to ask these to yourself first and then go out to be able to find a person. But it's, it's more like you don't even find the person. You kind of create the person. And you create your life. What about your experiences? You know, so that that's what I'm doing right now. I'm creating beautiful experiences. And if you just continue to listen to your intuition on how do I create a beautiful experience, more things are going to happen and unfold for you in a, an amazing way. All transparency. I love this. 
this is this is my language. Um, somebody is listening to this. Our audience is an audience of entrepreneurs, um, and they range in experience. They range in income. And somebody is saying, but I thought that he helped professionals right. multiply their monthly or their annual income into their monthly income. How does all of this connect? Yeah, first of all, it all connects because relationships create your life. Relationships create your dynamic. All the money that you want to have access to is in other people's pockets. The money that you have in your pocket is not even your money. You give that money to somebody else. So you got to understand where am I giving this money to? Because I need this money to have money babies. I need this money to get pregnant. I need this money to multiply. So you have to first understand that dynamic. Then you have to say, okay, all the impact that I want to make is where in other people's hearts. So I got to find a way to be genuine. I got to find a way to be sincere. I got to find a way to be vulnerable, connected. Mm -hmm. Now, if that's true, then all the potential that you want to actualize comes with other people as well. So if you want to be great, you got to first become better within yourself. And then you're going to be able to be better with other people. And then when you're with other people, it enhances your your what you can accomplish. Like the, the slow road to success is doing it alone. And I think that number is super low for people who actually become successful alone. As soon as you walk out the house, it's probably like two or three, four or five hundred people who done helped, had a hand in creating the clothes, creating your, your outfit as far as what you're going to wear, um, your your car or whatever place you're going to, the, the building that you're in, or whatever the case, um, there's always going to be strategic partnerships. So understanding that strategic partnerships, how could you how could you have a great business, but your communication suffers? How could you actually be amazing to communicate with each other, but if you can't communicate with yourself? Mm. If you have negative self-talk within self, then you're going to probably have negative self-talk well, uh, with other people. Or what you're saying to them could be positive self-talk, but clearly unbelievable unbelievable it, right. it doesn't translate right. because you don't really know the experience of what positive self-talk feels like so you can say these words because you know what it sounds like but you don't know the emotion and the energy and the feeling and the expressions that are all tied to it right. so it's unbelievable unbelievable interpretation and communication two dynamics that we yeah. don't really talk about we focus on communication but let me take a survey how many here how many people here think that the best communicator Just raise your hand if you're best communicator <laughs> so what about the best interpreter are you able to interpret what someone else is saying because you can't hear from their mouth mm -hmm. you can hear from your own ears mm -hmm. now one of the things too is understanding the fantastic five once you once you solve the problems within yourself you got to solve yourself first like m money is not your problem money is abundant and always and you're abundant and you can get it like the money that you want already exists don't you don't you agree it's already out here it's already been printed right? and they're printing more. Right. <laughs> so how do you attract the money to you? You got to become the person that earns the right to have the experience, but you got to have the fantastic five. The fantastic five is you got to have an anchor. What's your anchor? Like, so for me, my anchor is personal to business development. It's my app. It's the book, right? It's transformation. Now within that, you got to have an upsell. What's the upsell? Of course. Mm -hmm. Let me just break down money real quick. Please. Show you how to turn your annual income to monthly income real fast. Let's do right? it. So let's just say, you know, I wanted to get to 30, 30, 30, uh, thousand in a month. That, that's really doable. I know, like you mentioned before, like some people might not believe it. That's actually really doable to get $30,000 in a month. Uh, if somebody walks away with 30,000 a year. So let's just say I had a, a, you know, a program, right? In my program, that's my anchor. I have accountability program. So i take mentors and I uh, use my program to help their mentees out. So they have, might have a mentorship. You might have a mentorship. I'll take all of your mentees and I'll put them in my morning programs, right? Where we help them get the best out of them, push them past the current limitations. So, okay, cool. Let's just say that was like $5,000 per person. And let's just say we only got five people, right? Mm -hmm. Let's say we only got five people. Yeah. Five people paid to get that type of service, whatever. Cool. Um, how much is that? 25,000, 25, right? Okay. Now we had an upsell. Mm -hmm. The upsell, let's just say the upsell was 90, 997. Mm -hmm. So the upsell was a course. So, okay, cool. You might be at work and you might not be able to make all the calls, but you want something that you can play back. Yeah. Okay, cool. We made a course for you. $1,000 each. That's just $5,000. 5, we had 30000 already, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. So now you understand. Now I got to get to the other aspects of the Fantastic Five. So I got my, um, my, I got my anchor. I got my upsell, but now I need my assets. What you could do now is you can get corporate life insurance or you can get life insurance, IUL. 
Mm -hmm. Right. So I have corporate home life insurance. Now, now my money is getting pregnant. My money is having babies in there. Yeah. Right. Sure. That's, that's just my asset. That's just what's bringing me more money. Okay, cool. Now you also need affiliates. So out of those five people who, who might want to get funded, who might want to get access to a hundred thousand dollars quicker than their job could pay them or faster than they could save it. Probably the whole five. Mm -hmm. Let's just say three people. Let's say I got them hundred thousand dollars, but maybe my cut of it was, you know, maybe 3%. Mm -hmm. So I just got 3%. I got three. That's 9,000. Mm -hmm. Add that to the, to what we had 30. That's what 39,000. Yeah. All right, cool. That's only three. Now we got two more, right? So we got the, the anchor. We got the upsell. We got the affiliate. We got the asset, right? So we got one more, right? One more would be investments. My investments are real estate. So now I'm doing investments within real estate. All I'm doing is dishing out money. Yeah. I'm just taking some of the money that I made, some of the profit I made, and I'm waiting on a return for it. Mm -hmm. That's it. I'm doing that with multiple properties. Mm -hmm. And literally, we already made 40000 plus. So now when I get that money back, let's just say I did something prior, like a month ago, prior, or two months ago prior, and now I got the return on that. That's just upside now. Yeah. So I already showed you how you could actually get to 39000 in a month. And that's only on five people. Mm -hmm. And that's three people getting funded. But what I'm getting from this, um, you know, I've I've made thirty thousand dollars in a month several times. 100%. Um, and what I know is that I had to become a woman who could earn thirty thousand dollars in a month sustainably. Like there will be some people who just do it and they didn't become much of anything. And then you fit, you see later that they they're not doing it anymore. You can tell that they kind of fell off. Um, what precedes all of this, even the five steps or the five components is who you are becoming in real time. If you're struggling to believe like somebody listened to you, I know my audience and I know somebody is saying, yeah, I mean, but you're talking about selling a $5,000 program. I don't have $5,000 worth of information, nor, nor do I know f people who have $5,000. Well, that's just a limited mindset right now. And now once you start to work on yourself and all the stuff that we've talked about in the last 60 minutes, when you start to actually practice those things, you believe bigger about yourself, right? Right. Yeah. You believe bigger about yourself. You're able to make bigger decisions and you're able to take bigger risks, risks because it all ties back into how you've reprogrammed your subconscious mind to believe at a higher level. Right. And, so here's the primary focus. This, this is how you can start to believe at a higher level. I wrote this book called Becoming More Effective in Less Time. Mm -hmm. Right. And the subtitle under it is when good is no longer good enough. Mm. You have to get mad enough at your situation to make a decision to say good is no longer good enough for me. See, most people have been so busy being good that they've forgotten about their greatness. Mm. You probably forgotten about how great you truly are. You got to remember that. You got to understand the ancestors chose you. You are the great one. And when I wrote this book, it was because I got tired of people asking me, are you like, are you good? Like, hey, how's everything doing? I'm just good. I said, I want to be great. Yeah. I want my results to be great. I want my life to be great. And I had to solve me first. I had to get past the trauma of the, uh, the, trauma of the past. I had to get past pro procrastination. I had to get past uh, self doubt and those are the only true limitations on us is mm. the limitations that we put mm -hmm. but people who are so so like used to fighting to hold on to limitations that they get to keep them yeah and they're so used to holding on to who they've been that they can't become who they want to be but it takes a community to bring that out of you like if you had a tall brother or let's say you had a, a tall sister or a rich sister mm -hmm. who are you mo most likely to become like if I had a tall, tall sister. sister. And you're the younger sister. You're the younger sister. You got mm -hmm. an older sister. She's tall. Like maybe you're just still a kid and your sister, she's tall. Yeah. You know, um, and then you have a, another sister. She's rich. Who mm -hmm. are you more likely to become? Like who I want, who I see myself in the most. Honestly, I'm more likely to become. I mean, statistically, I want to say tall because tall height can run in the family. Right. But Donnie Wiggins is more likely to become rich. Right. You're more likely to become rich. Mm hmm. And the reason why you're more likely to become rich is because the environment is because of the what you can learn, right? Mm -hmm. Your growth is predicated on what you can learn. Mm -hmm. And if you can learn how to be rich, I can't really teach you how to be tall. You cannot teach me how. That's the luck of the DNA. 
it's just the way the DNA rolls. Right. Yeah. Yeah. No, what you're saying is really so powerful. It's about environment because honestly, as I'm thinking about what you're saying and I'm thinking about the clients that I've coached, I'm thinking about my own journey. I didn't do very much different to go from a six figure entrepreneur to a multi six figure entrepreneur to a seven figure entrepreneur. The first thing that I did was put myself in an environment that made me believe. And the only thing that I did differently, honestly, Sean, is I just believe bigger than most people. The moment I decided, like, I remember Dave and I were on the Social Proof podcast. And this was um, February of 2020. And we literally sat there together and said, yo, why haven't we made a million yet? Like, we see so many people around us, our environment, making millions of dollars. And we're like, yo, why haven't we made a million yet? Like we connect a lot of dots. We have so much information. We have all this experience. We work really, really hard. And we called a friend and who's a multimillionaire and said, yeah, what do we have to do to make a million dollars? And he's like, in order to make a million, just believe bigger. Believe you can make 10. You'll run into, you'll, two things will happen. You'll either make the million, like run into it easily, or you'll you'll surpass it. And we did. It didn't even take a year for both of us to do it. The moment we made the decision, it started to make sense that my belief was on a whole other level, but I became so intentional in that moment about the environment. At that time, because I had such a big goal, I curated my environment so strategically. I had to distance myself in certain situations and I had to pull closer in others environment 100 mm -hmm. environment and the, one of the keys is become more effective in less time that's the primary focus become more effective in right. less time but how do we do it mm -hmm. like because we could sit up here and tell you everything but how do we do it you become more effective in less time through strategic partnerships when you when you create strategic partnerships by default you get multiple streams of income mm -hmm. everything i was talking about with the fantastic five you're only working actively on one of them and that's your anchor everything else was strategic partner Mm. I went and got somebody funded. It didn't take me nothing. I just, hey, can you get this person funded? Yeah. 5000 yeah. 3000 2000 You done made $10,000. Mm -hmm. And you, what did you do? All you did was be you. So you got to get paid to be you. Who are you? You're an amazing person. Who are you? You are the greatest person. Who are you? You are somebody that's loved and appreciated. Who are you? You're you. And that's the most unique thing about every person. It's the most. Yeah. Nobody else can be you. Yeah. Um. I used to say all the time that I'm irreplaceable until I realized how many people I replaced, <laughs> right? So everybody is replaceable, but not duplicatable. Irreplaceable, yes. Duplicatable, absolutely not. Yes, yes, yes. I wish we had so much more time. I really do. I really do. We'll probably have to have another conversation um, at a later time. Um, I want you guys right now where you are, what you're feeling, the experience, like what you're feeling right now is your experience of the present. And I want you to drop in the comments like right now what you're feeling. Are you feeling like, oh, this is just a bunch of mumbo jumbo. But are you or are you also feeling um, like, wow, I get it now. Something shifted. Right. right. If something shifted for you during this episode, just type the word shift in the comments, right? Um, tell us about your book because I want people to have an opportunity to um, learn about becoming more effective. Right. So the book is really showing you something that is deep and it's basically going to teach you negatives versus notifications. Most people mm -hmm. look at the negatives <laughs> instead of the notifications. Okay, I did this thing. Oh, man, suck. I did this. It's not a negative unless you choose to see it that way, it could be a notification. So if you say, okay, cool, I don't even have the money to purchase this book, which is, you know, a couple of dollars, um, and somebody mine, it could be a lot more, right? Um, but if I don't have the money to purchase this book, it's not a negative. What's the notification? Maybe that area I need to work more in my finances. Mm -hmm. Maybe I should be, you know, but what happened with my relationship? My ex, F my ex. No, it's not about F your ex. Your ex shows you something. 
Your ex shows you where you can work on. Your ex shows you which areas you need to develop. Your ex shows you all these positive things about yourself if you see it that way. What's the yes. what's the notification in it? So this book is going to teach you the notifications so that way you can master your mind, simplify your success, and elevate your life. And it's not just about me. It's about you. It's about how you feel. We got workbooks in here. Basically, it's like a whole workbook in here. Mm -hmm. And we're going to have you intentionally meditate and think um, and, and really reflect on your life. But most importantly, we have a three-day summit coming up, mm -hmm. right? A three-day summit to teach you how to become more effective in less time to turn your annual income into monthly income. Mm -hmm. And people can get access to that if they text the word millions to this number, 347-429-4696, right? So it's just understanding that if you're able to see yourself get into that destination, you're going to get to that destination. I saw myself speaking with Donnie because they kept telling me, yo, go see Donnie, go see Donnie. I'm like, all right. But I've never seen Donnie in person. Mm -hmm. Two days, two days ago, I see Donnie in person. Oh, damn. All right. It's coming closer. <laughs> Wake up tomorrow. They're like, yo, you go, you got to go see Donnie today. <laughs> ah, okay. Now I'm with Donnie. Oh, all right. See, I, I know my frequency. Your frequency is based upon what you see frequently. Yes. So mm. what are you tuning into? Because whatever you tune into, you turn into. So I want you to understand that if you want to put the people in your life that's going to allow you to ascend, you got to make sure that you got to pay attention because whoever has your attention has your ascension. And I just want to make sure that you're in a space full of love, connectivity and financial prosperity. And with this book and with the three day summit, you'll be in that space where you can transition to family legacy. You can set your family up for life. So that's what this whole thing is about. It's about legacy. Yeah, for sure. I love your frequency is based on what you see and experience frequently. I got another one for you. You want one? Want give me, one? give me one more. See, your circumstances are based around the circle that you're standing in. Ooh, are you freestyling again? I'm is is that what's happening? Oh, I, your circumstances are based around the circles that you're standing in. Mm. I'm going to say that. Mm. I'm probably gonna put it on like a caption on Instagram. I don't need you to come by and say I got it from you. Just know that it was a memory that I took from this conversation. Right. Memory. Is that all right? Yes. Please. Hold <laughs> on. Let me make sure I got this text number right because I don't want y'all texting millions to the wrong number now. Hold on real quick. Let me make sure. All right. So if y'all if, if y'all do want to learn more and come to the three day summit to manifest your millions because 2020, 2020 what year are we in right now? Um, don't we, even say that yet, mm -mm. yeah, because we don't even want to get mm -mm. on. We don't, wanna, <laughs> don't even talk about that. We know we're that not we dating the, the episode, right? We're in the future. <laughs> Just we're know. in the year, whatever year you're in right now. <laughs> that's the year that we're in. Right that's now. the year that we're so in right now. Text millions to three four seven four two nine six four nine six, right? And we, you're gonna be able to register for our free workshop, and then you're gonna be able to get access to our manifest millions summit all right love it love it love it love it love it well i thank you so much sean i love walking away um i have plenty of people sit on this seat and i learn from every single one even if the conversations aren't like the best conversations sometimes i learn from every single one because i decide that i'm going to learn something from every single person who sits with me on this couch right and today um thank you for allowing me to experience that moment of um, memory, uh, that exercise of, of great memories about my Aunt Betty, that definitely meant a lot. That's a first. Um, and also thank you for being the bright light that you are. You are a bright light. You really are. You're a star. And I can feel it in your energy. There are a lot of people who teach and talk about personal development. And you can tell the difference between people who have learned other people's one-liners um, versus the people who may have still learned some one-liners, but are actually living it in their own lives. Like before these cameras turned on, everybody, you got to know that this man who you're seeing right now was this man before the cameras started to record. Yeah, for sure. I want to say one thing publicly while, while I'm on, because thank you, Queen, for being the person that you are. And some people may see podcasts as entertainment or maybe information, but you're life changing. Mm. because you're allowing people to share their stories. Yeah. You're allowing people to tell something so powerful. And I thank you for being that person. That's a pillar of success, queen. And I want to snap it up and clap it up for you because you are amazing. I need y'all to snap louder on that. Yep. Let's hear a thunderous applause from the background. <laughs> <laughs> that was really sweet. Thank you, Sean. Tell everybody uh, one more time how to connect with you. Yeah. You can connect with me 
Uh, it could be on any platform. Mindset Mogul, Mindset Mogul Crew. Uh, we should have that information. It's going to be right in the description. So you'll have all of that. Mindset Mogul Crew, C R U is the crew, um, and also on my platform, Love Plus. So L U H V. Uh, if you go on the website, loveplus.com, um, or you can go to the, the app itself, Love Plus Transformation. Yeah. Close us out with one final thought that you love to leave these entrepreneurs with. Yeah, I said it before and I'll say it again. Um, I just want to reiterate this part because most people sometimes don't believe in themselves as much. But you are already everything that you ever wanted to be. You are amazing. You are whole. You are complete. There's a you inside of you that you haven't even met yet. It's waiting to be unleashed. But you have to give up something in order to receive. Which things are you going to give up? Because your new journey, your new life, your greatest version is waiting for you. And I'm talking about today. So what are you going to do right here in the present moment so you can get gifted with things? So you can have beautiful experiences. So I'm leaving y'all with that. With a lot of love, peace, love, and beautiful energy. Mindset mogul. I'm out of here. You have heard it first from Sean Crume, the mindset mogul. Um, you really are that guy. You really are a mindset mogul. You guys comment your favorite part, your biggest takeaway from today's episode and what stood out for you the most. Don't forget to like, subscribe and share. And don't forget, I have a mentorship community. If you're not in it, you need to be. Check the link in the bottom for all entrepreneurs who are looking for personal, professional, and financial development, actionableceo.com. We will see you next week. Let's go.